Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, I'm going to line up here. I'm going to start with my orange belts back here behind me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look where you're running on the ground, guys. I don't want y'all to hit the little Yellow belt. My name is Makai Watkins, and I am involved in Taekwondo and Judo and martial arts. My name is Alexander, and I do Taekwondo. I'm Caleb. I'm Jacob. I'm Ava. And I'm Justice. My name is Andrew. <laughs> My name is Eduardo Posas. Uh, I'm Eric Posas, and I'm Gabby's older brother. My name is Juan Villa. My name is Donnie Posas. I actually started at the age of two doing martial arts, and I really just fell in love with it and how I learned how to help others. And that's really one of the main reasons why I enjoy doing it because it gives me a sense of pride that I know I can actually make a difference in my community. Well, I started Taekwondo whenever I was four and it's been the greatest thing ever. So if anything bad happens, boom, I got that talent. I mean, we usually, we grew up doing it because our dad was just always into it for all his life, and so he wanted us to like be it. And it's kind of like through the family, like we all do it. Yeah, it's, it's basically a family thing. And um, I guess all of us, we got, as it went down, we stopped doing the whole karate thing and more got into the boxing part of it. But basically it's just, fighting's just been in our blood, like passed down. I've been in martial arts for, uh, let's see, over a decade. Uh, grew up alongside Gabby and learned uh, several styles of martial arts, including Kempo, Arnis, and uh, uh, several other styles of kickboxing and boxing and jujitsu. I'm a black belt in Kempo Karate. Trained in Kempo Karate, boxing, kickboxing, uh, jujitsu. I've been doing Filipino combat Arnis with uh, Mr. Poses for about ooh, a good, uh, st we started back in 1995 probably. And um, so we started off small school, joined school, and then we kind of progressed and then he opened up his own martial arts school. And uh, so we, um, I was part of the, you know, part of the family kind of, and then also just also the, um, when you're part of the family, you got to train with the family. So. It was part of teaching class and, uh, and and getting involved in martial arts, so it helped me a lot to, uh, in life. I have a black belt under my father in Kempo and Filipino Arnis and close quarter combative arts. Been doing uh, martial arts since I was five, six years old. Gabby, wow. Um, I remember sitting at home, always watching her videos, like, wow, I want to be just like that. And she was just really a big inspiration in the family because she was really the first one to make it big. She's getting on commercials and she just made us all so proud. And she really is my inspiration to what I do, you know. Gabby is probably the first YouTuber that I would ever think of that's in our family, probably. But all her accomplishments, they're just so amazing and how she got there on her own and with the help of her family, it's just, it's really great. Gabby's always just like trying her hardest. Like she never lets anything get in her way of not doing it. But like growing up with Gabby, Gabby's always just been like the cool, the cool aunt, the cool one of all of them. Gabby's just really cool. Like she's just an amazing aunt. She's one of the scariest people I know. But she can be a very fun person. That's what I like about her. Um, Gabby's always been an inspiration to me with all the stuff she does. Um, 
She's always been kind and brave. Um, yeah, she's my only and favorite aunt. And, um, yeah, it's mostly her, like, her drive to do anything and, like, push for everything. Like, I, I, I kind of looked, to, looked up to her and, like, fighting and everything, but it was more about, like, her drive when she, like, pursued her dreams and everything. It's crazy. It's, uh, I'm very proud of her, how uh, far she's come and how hard she's worked. It shows off and it pays. It's paid off so far. And she is going to continue working hard if I, no, if I ever know her. <laughs> There's just depth to the brother and sister relationship, you know. First of all, it is a brother and sister relationship. We share the same parents. We grew up together, you know. But, you know, we're, we're both on this fitness and martial arts journey. Um, while I was running the gym, you know, when she came of age, she really stepped up and really helped out around here, found her own path as well. Um, going back to depth of relationship, um, we push each other. We have, so that's where the friendship comes from. We just really push each other, motivate each other. A lot older than her at the time, and I was actually helping take care of her and raise her. Um, so. She was just my little sister. That's, that's always how I've known her. It's, it's very impressive just seeing her drive. And she just, she never says no. It's always like, you know, it's possible. I, I like that attitude. What I remember one time, we did a lot of things together. We went to the parties together. I always took her along with me in different parties. Uh, and uh, obviously field trips. I was the, the chosen one. And, hey, you, you can go with her to field trips. So I was there all the uh, in those moments and um but i i can always see here when we went to a party she was wore her little um kind of like a not a tiara thing but she had a just like a glamour girl i knew she, she that's why i knew she was uh, you know special because she would dress up her own way and she didn't care what other other people think and she was she was a diva growing up uh, being a martial arts family it was just uh part of our lives our father made it's like like an old school style of uh, martial arts. You know, most people learn martial arts, you know, um, growing up, they went to a school, you know. Me growing up doing martial arts was in the garage and like you would see like in movies and things like that. Uh, for Gabby, Gabby was, you know, I was, I probably got my black belt when I was eight, I think I was like 18, 19 years old. And, and so Gabby was still a little little baby. She was still, uh, you know, a little girl, just seeing everything happen. So um, I got into, you know, being with Gabby when I was a little older. So I was like around 22, 20, 20 no, no, 24. And uh, I would train her in some jujitsu and things like that when she was around like nine years old. So even when I was, you know, 18, she was a baby growing up. So she kind of uh, started doing it. I guess I guess probably the same age as I was doing it. You know, it makes me makes me really proud. And, you know, me being the oldest, and I'm so I'm the youngest one. I mean, the first one. You know, growing up into it, and then um, the oldest, of course. And so she's the baby girl, and her, and now she's going for her black belt. Uh, I love it. Uh, it. It's a it's a it's a big deal, a big ceremony, and it means a lot. It wasn't just you know just given to her. You know, you know she's I forget how old she is now twenty uh, in her twenties and seeing her as a baby and now you know it wasn't just given to her just because you know she's a baby girl and you know she likes karate. She's daddy's girl that that no she's been trained it, she loves it, it's a part of her, and uh, I guess it's like a full circle that my dad would always say, you know, me being the oldest, and then now Ava uh, being the youngest, uh, doing that, so yep. We're gonna get beat by Gabby. Yeah. We're scared. Well, at least I am. Um, we love you, Gabby. Love and, you, Gabby. Uh, love you, Gabby. Yeah, we might get clapped by you. Um, Everything like that, but you're awesome. Just wait. I'm a, I'm gonna land one good one on you. I promise. Don't kick me in my nuts during this test, please. <laughs> Just don't kick me low. <laughs>
<laughs> no, but shoot, just keep going. I'm very proud of you. Very, very proud of you. Keep going, keep grinding. Uh, shoot, this is just one step. This is just one step towards your journey. Keep on going, keep pushing. You know, congratulations. Go hard at the end. Your muscles are all gone. You know, there's like, people think of it as mashed potatoes. That's what they feel like. You, you just hard. I'm just proud of her and uh, I wish her the best and I love her. Gabby, I just want to tell you I love you. I am so proud of you. All right, so we'll keep it up. Uh, we can't let it uh, die and uh, in our families. I love you very much. My name is Eddie Posas. Um, I am the founder and president of Molo Mio Martial Arts. Been in the martial arts for over 35 years. Uh, have multiple black belts uh, in the martial arts, starting with Kempo, Filipino Arnis, Post quarter combat, combat kempo, uh, and also teach kickboxing. Uh, you know, we got ready for this e examination, and I've been training with Gabby, you know, since she's been five years old, so it seems like a lifetime. Last last weekend was her Warrior 300, which uh, she had to do in order to receive her red belt. And uh, so we've been preparing for this day, and uh, she did very well. So. A lot of mental, uh, a lot of uh, spiritual and, and of course physical training to get up to this point. Uh, but yeah, emotional, yes. Uh, being my youngest child and also my daughter is very emotional. Uh, you know, I felt like everything was spewed onto her. I have uh, actually five boys, and, and she's the, my daughter. You know, the, the, my daughter. So uh, of course. A little bit different with them, but still emotional. Being an instructor, uh, and then also a father to a student that's going to receive uh, a black belt is, is is just very emotional. And it was very emotional for me uh, because you know it's kind of hard to take the father out of the instructor, but uh, you know something that uh, we've all done, and and that was her passage to become uh, a black belt. Well, for one thing, she was always attached to me, um, you know, and, and the boys, you know, uh, when I went fishing and stuff like she was, she was there. I would get up in the morning, I would, I, you know, I, I would tell the guys, everyone, all my kids, hey, I'm going to go fishing uh, tomorrow, so be ready. I'm going to get up at four o'clock in the morning and we're going to go. And she would be up and ready and waiting for me while the other boys would be asleep. <laughs> so... The difference was uh, just her tenacity and her um, for her to learn and always being attached to me and and uh, just you know I never uh, did any short cuts on her and everything so I was actually harder on her because being a female and everything so I really want her wanted her to uh, grasp the concept of, of uh, martial arts and definitely she has done that. I just say congratulations. I know it's been a, a journey to get here. Uh, what you achieved is, uh, there's not too many people that can do that. So hold your head up and be proud of, of being a black belt. And also me passing down the heritage of the martial arts to you. And uh, I wanna see that passed down to the next generation for, uh, with your children. But uh, what I can say is always be a student have a student mindset, and when uh, when you rise up and, and you accomplish something like this, uh, bring somebody else with you uh, and, and share your success. And um, just know that your dad loves you, and, and uh, you know again, congratulations, and you're above average.
to start uh, down here. These are, uh, this is uh, Gabby Zuke. She's going to be getting beat on most of the test today. So everybody clap for Christina. <laughs> also her boyfriend JD will get some too. This is uh, my grandson's justice. So get some. Caleb, uh, Caleb. And I got Jacob over there in the, in the end. I I'm gonna start with mine, my sons. I got uh, my youngest, that's Andrew. That's Andrew. This is Eric. Eric. Juan. My oldest, Donnie. Eduardo. Everybody calls him Eddie, like me, so. Uh, by the way, Eduardo, uh, this is, uh, got passed down to Dojo, so this is his Dojo. He's been doing a fantastic job here with the family, and uh, they keep expanding. <laughs> We're going to have a boxing ring here, that's where you see the pose, and he's also breaking into this side. So uh, if you guys uh, met me a couple years back, I had one of the biggest dojos here in this area, and it's coming back. So give me a This one over here, this is uh, my nephew Ray, but actually uh, he was like my son. He's been training with me since he was nine, nine years old. He would come stay in the summers with me every summer, get beat up on a little bit. <laughs> but uh, he's got a dojo in Tennessee. They're from Tennessee and uh, fantastic young man. Uh, this is Ray Watkins. His beautiful wife. I've had pleasure also training with her, and, and she's fantastic. So this is his wife. <laughs> and of course, hey, they got some of the one of the most uh, energetic boys I've ever seen. So uh, this is the little one. Ever, say your name. My name is Alexander. Alexander. <laughs> Sir, your name. My name is Lucas. This is a student of Ray's that he's uh, in San Marcos now. Uh, uh, you were in Tennessee, right? Yes, sir. So he's here. He's a Texas boy now. So, uh, but he is a black belt in judo. So everybody, give my hand. <laughs> so this is my family. So, uh, sir. Oh, oh man, they <laughs> feel. That's his. La Chiquita. I always got to save her best for last. Uh, everybody say hi to Ava. 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 I remember when Gabby was like that. Woo. I'm sorry I get emotions. Um, been in the martial arts for over 35 years. Of course, I've trained my, my boys, and all my students are, are like family to me. So, you know, they wind up being my sons and daughters. <clears throat> So um, it means a lot.
but uh, I have somebody here, and I got a couple of students that have been with me for, for quite a long time. Um, I had a dojo here in Duncanville back in the early 90s. I had this guy come in, and he told me, sir, uh, I'm a bouncer. I said, oh, okay. All right, okay. He goes, uh, you know, we have gun attacks. We get, we have knife attacks every weekend. I'm like, wait, well, guy's pretty serious, right? So he became my student. And uh, it's so funny because uh, he joined my, my, my Arnis program. And, you know, I was teaching him Kempo and other things there, too. But he would come to me after the weekend because his... He would be there probably Friday and Saturday or on the weekend. He'd come back to me uh, during class on uh, the weekday. He said, sir, I tried that and it worked. I'm like, dang. <laughs> he goes, I took a knife off somebody, you know, with the strips. Uh, Don, can you stand up, please? <laughs> uh, he, uh, yeah, he was a great, great, great man. And uh, we still keep in touch after how long has it been? Amen. So it's been a long time. <laughs> so uh, he saw Gabby as a baby and all the kids and, you know, a story about him. And I told him, I asked him, I said, you're not going to jump out here today, are you not? <laughs> During uh, Donnie's test, Donnie had went for his black belt. And, if, you know, if you had seen it, it would, they would probably call. I'm surprised they didn't call CPS on me. So uh, it was pretty, pretty brutal. But Don stepped out. And was going to defend his little brother, you know. So that was something I've never seen that before. But yeah, he very passionate. Uh, like I said, we become family, and he was that was his little brother. So it was awesome. But I have another person here that uh, when I opened up the big dojo here right across the street, it was Manos of Quiero Combat of Arts, which I was teaching uh, MMA, and it was one of the biggest gyms here in the air at the time, about ten thousand square feet. Uh, so, uh, we were, me and my oldest son, we were, uh, involved with the pit out in California. Uh, we were just getting in, that's when the MMA was just starting. My nephew would come and bring his fighters down. So it was great. It was, it was, it was some good times. Uh, there was one particular young man that I had brought. He was in Taekwondo and then, uh, when I was in Dale and Christie and he saw me one day, um, doing my stuff and. He asked him, he said, is he doing Taekwondo? Uh, and they said, no, not doing Taekwondo. He's doing Kempo. So, okay, Bob. I hope he's still. Where is he at? And then, um, so he came up to me afterwards. He goes, sir, I see your stuff. And, you know, I, I really like to join your class. I said, sure, come on. And ever since then, he's been with me. And, boy, I tell you what, one, one of the most scrappiest guys, one of the best fighters that I had and one of the best spinning round uh, hook kicks you've ever seen. And I seen it for, I mean, people would come in. I said, Omar, go get him. You know, every time the fighter would come in and he would, he would get him. But Omar, can you stand up, please? This is Omar. Right here. But, you know, uh, this is our roots. This is my roots. Something I passed down to all my kids. So very, very proud of, of, of our heritage. Uh, and it's, uh, like I said, over 35 years worth. I've trained with uh, many, many good instructors, uh, some that are not here any longer. And uh, my deal was to, uh, I wanted to pass down all my knowledge to my kids, grandkids, students. <laughs> That's something that I can say, you know what, uh, I left for them. It might not be monetary, but it's it's uh, something that uh, can change your lives. And, you know, I look at my daughter and when she started, and it's just phenomenal. And with all my children, uh, they all have their own professions, but you know, their base, this is their base, right? here. This is where, how they get their, all their, their strength from, their tenacity, 
uh, their hard work ethic. So it's been huge. You know, you can ask my nephew when he would come on the summers. Uh, it was like, okay, you're going to do two things. You're going to learn how to do woodworking, <laughs> and you're going to do martial arts. <laughs> so, you know, we would work, and, you know, we'd be all dirty. It's, okay, it's time to do martial arts. And, you know, so those always came uh, hand in hand with me. So, But I've taught my kids the skill. Even though they didn't like, they've all done woodworking and stuff. They just didn't care for it. That's it was right. a lot of work. You know? <laughs> they said, nah, I think I'm I used to have them strip and do all this kind of stuff, but they all know how to do it. So, but it's something that I've yeah, yeah. <laughs> passed down to them. Yeah. But you know what? This is <laughs> surprising me right now. Is this one over here? Because if you have a chance, I don't know now, but he's built this other side by himself. I mean, literally by himself. I mean, put up cheap rock and all this, and I and I remember Eric says, "Man, you look more and more like your dad." You know. <laughs> <laughs> But it's good because you know we all have uh my father passed down uh he was a pain body man he passed down that type of work ethic to us for the brothers and the family and you know that's what i've done with all my kids but it's great you know uh when you can do that when you have a father a mother that can pass on those things it's awesome but today we're going to celebrate you're going to watch Gabriella go for her black belt. Now, I believe she was around maybe 12 years old. Uh, she was going for her green belt at the time. And uh, so it was her and Andrew. And they were doing, you know, they, they went for their examination and everything. So I had quite a bit of other students in there. Because they only they did something wrong, I think it was a takedown or something. I failed them. They're like, you know, they were surprised. I said, well, I don't, I don't do any favors for you. It's going to be hard. Look at her now. But uh, you know, and then. It's so strange to see, uh, to hear your little girl come up to you and say, Dad, you know, I don't know, you know, she was about 11 or 12, and, you know, going through some things. And she goes, uh, and she, she's been in, in acting and everything at the time. She goes, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. So what are you talking about? I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want to act anymore. I said, okay, sweetie. And this is an 11, 12-year-old telling me this, <laughs> you know. Uh, it's like a grown-up coming up and say, I don't know what direction to go to. So I said, okay, sweetie, why don't you just get your black belt? Work on your black belt. And she goes, ding, okay. So by her doing that, it opened her eyes and, you know, God has shown favor to her. She has used that in her acting. And now you see her on billboards, you see her do commercials. Uh, and then, you know, she has elevated what I taught her to another level. And I'm so proud of her for doing it. And, uh, but you have to see someone come up and tell you that. But see, now she's right in line this way, and she's on line this way. Amen. But you're going to see uh, her go. Through some things today and uh, she's gonna it, it's her time and it's her show uh for her to all these years of, of literally blood sweat tears and you know you can ask any one of these guys over here uh it is blood sweat and tears it's a lot of work i've been working with her uh pleasure of working with her you know ever since she could crawl so uh you know it's it, it's good to see her now it's her time to go through that passage, which we've all been through, and she'll be in this position to sit up here now. And uh, just talking about a little bit about how maybe some of you have seen some black belt tests or martial art tests uh, in the past, maybe other systems, whatever. Mine's a little different. Um, the mobile meal system is what I've integrated as far as the IBNs, the CQC, 
kickboxing, kempo, all that's mashed together. And all that is, is what you're going to see today. Um, it's something that, you know, we all been blessed to go through. And like I said, I've, I've tested under several different instructors and had a pleasure of working with so many. And uh, to see uh, this happening now, it, it, it's, it's awesome. But she's going to be the first female, the youngest of my children, to be uh, ranked as a black belt in mobile music. Give her a hand. So I uh, just sit back, check it out. Like I said, uh, cheer her on, clap. You know, you'll have some time after she finishes some things to clap forward, stuff like that. So it's her day, it's her time. And uh, so with that all said, we're going to get started. Behind the salutation, please. Warrior, scholar, going forth, back to back, to fight, in unity, mind, body, and spirit, praying for God's protection, learning the way of the warrior through mortal meal. Thank you, ma'am. Rest position. Thank you, sir. What is your lineage? I trained under my father my entire life, and his lineage goes as follows. My father began training in 1979 to 1992 under Rick Fowler, whose direct lineage goes under Master Ed Parker of American Kempo Karate. During this time, my father also trained under Danny Monsanto in the Filipino martial arts of Cali. From 1993 to 1995, my father trained under Joseph Armador in Cedar Hill, Texas, in which he earned his third degree black belt in American Kempo Karate. Joseph's instructor was Steve White. In 1995, my father opened up his first commercial dojo in Duncanville, Texas called the United Martial Arts. From 1995 to early 2000s, my father trained under Hawk Hockheim, in which he earned his first degree black belt in Filipino armies, second degree black belt in American Kempo Combat Karate, and his first degree black belt in CQC. In 2008, my father opened up his first MMA school, co-signing across from, with a dojo, American Karate, uh, Dale and Christie's in Duncanville, Texas. In 2010, my father opened up the first of his kind and one of the largest in the area, Dallas Fort Worth area, the MDF Combative Arts, Montespiedo Combative Arts, stands for Hands of Steel Combative Arts in Cedar Hill, Texas. In 2010, my father opened up this current, in 2012, my father opened up this current dojo that we're in now, and soon passed it down to my older brother, Eduardo Posas. And in 2018, my father began developing his Molo Mio system, and Molo Mio can be translated to my style of martial arts. Can you tell me about the uh, crest that I need? Sir. The crest of the dragon eating its own tail means rebirth or reincarnation of self. What would you tell um, a new student that's walking in the door? Um, just give a, a brief explanation of what you teach. As far as what I teach, it's a mixture of Filipino armies, American Kempo Karate, kickboxing, boxing, CQC, and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And when you come in through these doors, always be a student and be ready to learn, have an open mind, and be ready to work hard. Why do you deserve a black belt? I have been training since age five, underneath my father, underneath you, underneath my brother, Eduardo, and uh, this is what I've been doing my entire life. Okay. Hi, Gabby, what does a black belt mean to you? Black belt means to me, hard work, and never giving up. I think, I think a lot of people, they get their black belt at eight or 12. And that was never an option. I've been doing this for over 17 years. So I earned it. I'm here and uh, 
I think a lot of girls, they look forward to their wedding day or babies. This is the day I've been working. What do you take from uh, martial arts? What do you take from it? And outside the gym, into the world, what do you take from martial arts? Mind, body, and spirit. You have to have a strong mind in order to have a strong body. You have to have a strong spirit in order to have a strong mind. And the way that you carry yourself throughout the world. I'm. If somebody were to ask me what defines you or who are you, I am a martial artist. Once you get this back up, because I know you will, um, what kind of goal or after this are you, uh, you know, you met? Continue training. Um, I don't think the schedule that I've built uh, training for the black belt, I think that's something that's kind of a rhythm now. So definitely continue training. And uh, I'd like to, I'd like to start traveling. I'd like to start teaching more and doing seminars. And I'd like to, uh, show what I know in uh, my passion, acting. So carry that throughout the uh, industry, in that industry. Yeah. Is there any other style you would like to learn? Definitely, I'd like to get a little bit more into judo. Um, I do jujitsu, but I'm not very proficient with throws. Um, I'd also kind of like to get into Krav Maga. Andrew? What inspires you to continue on your journey? Um, my dad. All right, Gabby, this is a, I was told by one of my instructors back when I first received my first black belt. He said, now you're really gonna learn. He goes, this is just the beginning. So a lot of people say, well, get your black belt. And it is a celebration. It does mean so much. And what I want you to take from this, and this is everyone here, is that it is a responsibility when you do receive that black belt. Because not only you're going to carry on what you believe in here, all the attributes and the discipline, but you also carry it outside. So it means a lot. Um, being a black belt also, uh, don't ever forget that, you, that you're a student. Always have a student mindset. Um, there is uh, so many different styles, so many different things that you can learn from other instructors, from your students. Uh, so always keep an open mind. Always make it to where it uh, it fits you, but some things that uh, you learn might not work for you now, but as you get older or later on, you get to understand it. You go back to those things and you never forget them because when you teach someone else, it might work for them. So never forget that. Uh, let's see, with your uke, I want to see the, kick, the kicking set. Christina. And salute each other, please.
Jesus. Give her a hand. against a hair grab. CQC, part of the test, self-defense techniques, close quarter combat is what CQC stands for. Stand up. All right. This is self-defense technique against a jab cross. Two-handed front choke. Two-handed front choke. 
Same side, wrist grab. Same side, wrist grab. So to this technique against a two-handed lapel grab. Two-handed lapel grab. Self-defense technique against a takedown full mount attack. Against a takedown full mount attack. Move. self-defense technique against an overhead club attack. Against an overhead club attack. Move! against an angle one knife attack. Wait, sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Angle the disarm to the ground. So, uh, okay. All right. Uh, this will be against a angle one knife attack. Angle one knife attack. Move. Center stab attack. Angle five, right in the stomach, stab attack. Move. Um, 
both feeding and both uh, defending. Um, here's a partner. Partner Rick. This is Jack Castro. Ready? Begin. Defend against the, a jab and a rear hook. Follow through with the left leg deep kick to the midsection, jab, right hook, and low outside round house kick. Ready? Begin. Again. Against a rear knee thrust. Follow through with a jab, cross, step out left hook to the ribs, and left round leg, uh, and left leg roundhouse kick to the head. Let me repeat that. Defend against a rear knee thrust. Follow through with a jab, cross, step out left hook to the ribs, and left leg roundhouse kick to the head. <laughs> Defend against an outside leg kick. Follow through with a jab, Superman punch, and step behind right side kick to the ribs. against an inside leg kick, follow through with a jab, left leg inside roundhouse kick to the leg, back fist to the head, and spinning back kick to the rib. against a roundhouse kick to the head, follow through with a headlock, two knee thrusts, jumping front kick, and jab cross. So I want to see you up on the Carenza, okay? First step, Gabby.
Blue Bud, not strip. Okay. No, it's all right. Uh, let's do the 12 angles first. Gabby, same with here. Go to reverse grip, please. In the hood book. Reverse lock. Please try that again. Please. Our horizontal and vertical gooseneck. Figure four lock. Please. The sleeper. Please. Standing headlock. Please. 
reverse neck break. This next step will be the, our knees. The, we're going to do the doble bastón, 14 minutes of attack. Start with the doble. Yeah. Start with cadena.
Bandai mana? Can you see that? Can you follow the image? Face this way. Oh, what are you saying? You get hit by the engine in church. <laughs> You'll have a. Uh, where's Don? Don remembers that. <laughs>
Ice. Guys are too quiet. Give your hand. Against the 14 angles of attack, same side block strike. Same side block of an equal strike. Go get it, come on. Same side. 
try and block Surfer Sinawali. in the water. Gonna break for a little bit, so I'm gonna wrap her hands. This next section, she's going to do her uh, full sparring, so guys can relax and everything. So it'll take me about 15 minutes. All right, yeah, you got this man. This is her day. You think too tight? Um, I mean, just a finger, but I mean, I think it's okay though. Can you grab? Grab? Okay. Which one? This one? Yeah, you see the blood? That was fine. <laughs> Good? Yeah. Okay. Good. Or we start on the ground. On the ground. Get out on the left side. Get out on the left side. Go. 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 Come on, 
There you go, Gabby. There you go. There you go. Back in the center. Go, Gabby. Guard, come on. Get a pass. Get a pass. Get a top. There you go. Bounce it. Come on. Control arm, Gabby. Come on. Yeah, you need your pass. Come on. Control arm, Gabby. Pass. Jake, touch our test. She needs others. Let's go. Come on. There you go, Gabby. There you go. Keep 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Gabby. Let's go. Come on, Gabby. Let's go. 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 Let's go
Again, there's not too many people that need a second to stand that, guys. Yeah. Yeah.
No. Yeah, I need to breathe. Ray, Don, sit back in the back, please. You know you did. 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 You If it was easy, yeah, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Everybody had a brother. Yeah. Especially all the cops. No, yeah. So proud of you. Well, you, you know, you can imagine just beating up on your daughter. <laughs> but she's my student. She's my student first. In here, she's my student.
Congratulations, Gabriela Corvina Posas. This diploma hereby declares that in your dedicated study and practice in the Eastern and Western martial arts, you have achieved the rank of first degree black belt. Here we have folks. <laughs>